<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, feline friends, and welcome to Catitude. I'm your show host, Michelle Fern. Today, it's all about the upcoming holiday, Halloween. I know it's many of my listeners' favorite holidays, and, you know, cats are involved. So we're going to talk all about Halloween. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. You know how they say you are what you eat? Well, guess what? Same is true for your fur babe. I have a grandpa dog, as I call him. Mr. Z is now 14. And over the years, you know, he's had his issues. But lately, he's had a lot of allergies. And I've recently put him on a solid gold diet. And I have noticed a major difference. And right now, Solid Gold is offering an amazing offer to all of our listeners. Yep, by visiting solidgoldpet.com slash petlife for 30% off your first order. Go ahead and take advantage of this great offer. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is Catitude, and we are talking about Halloween, which is, you know, it's, it's a fun holiday. We get to dress up. There's a lot of candy. And I think I read a stat that one third of the candy purchased in the U.S. is purchased around Halloween. And you go in the grocery store, there are bags and bags this time of year, you know, especially in the U.S. I'm not sure about all over the world, but in the U.S., Halloween is huge. And today we're going to talk about it and how it relates to your cat. So let's talk about some history. Halloween actually dates back to ancient times, to the Celtic festival of Sawin, which is in the area that is now Ireland, UK, and northern France. And the Celtics believed that their New Year started in November 1st. And they felt that right before the New Year, it would be the time when the spiritual world and the living world became narrower in a sense, and that the dead returned to the earth. So they would do various rituals to protect themselves from the dead and the ghosts that were coming up. They would dress up. They would light bonfires to ward off these ghosts. So that's one historical reason or one reason for the history of Halloween. Now, going back to where the word Halloween came from, Halloween is actually the evening before the Christian holy day of All Saints Day, which is November 1st. So Halloween, you know, October 31st is Hallow's Eve. So there you go with Halloween. You know, that's how that came around. And hey, this is how it all relates to us. Black cats seem to have some kind of magic, especially around Halloween. You know, they're used for decoration. You see black cats everywhere when you're looking at what to decorate your house with in Halloween. And kind of wonder, where did that get started? Why is that? And here we go. Once again, it goes back to ancient times. In the Middle Ages, it would believe that witches would turn themselves into a black cat to avoid detection. So that's where the association came with black cats and witches. So black cats were thought to be especially mysterious You know, cats in general are pretty mysterious, but black cats are especially mysterious. And that's where also the superstitions about black cats, you know, bringing good luck or bad luck and warding off evil and and all of that came from. They're actually, if you look at all the superstitions around the world, black cats can can be considered lucky or unlucky. Of course, we've all heard 
the superstition about if a black cat crosses your path, it's unlucky. That's something really common in North America. Then on the other side of the coin, if a white cat crosses your path, it's considered lucky. So there you go. Then you have the stigma that you actually make your own luck. So it doesn't matter what color cat crosses your path. Your luck is how you view it. <laughs> Here's some more superstitions about cats and black cats. Way back in the 16th century, Italians believed that if a black cat jumped on the bed of an ill person, that person was soon to die. And there actually was a movie years ago, I think it was a television movie, and it was based on truth that a black cat, a cat lived, I don't think the cat was black, a cat lived in this old age home. And right before somebody passed away, the cat would stay with that person. And that person knew and family members knew that that person was soon going to pass away. And that was something that was actually truthful that that happened. So who knows why? I mean, maybe the cats could sense something from the person or um, smell something that we can't. Who knows? But that was something that was actually true that that did happen. So kind of perplexing. Here's some more superstitions. Did you know if you find a single white hair on your black cat, that is considered a great omen? Yep. And also, here's one other. If a black cat is walking towards you, that means you are getting brought good luck. If a black cat walks away, it's considered that the luck is being taken away from you. There are a lot of movies and TV shows and famous black cats. I mean, some of them are not really black. Some are more tuxedo cats, but there are are a lot of famous cats. And of course, when you think about black cats, who comes to mind, you know, black cats and witches, who comes to mind first? Of course, Salem. And that's the black cat from Sabrina, the teenage witch. And that cat was supposedly a person that got turned into a cat. Then from there, you go to Binks from Hocus Pocus. And that was another cat that was a human that was turned into a cat, if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong, send me an email. Let me know. One of the most famous black cats, and he goes back quite a ways, is, of course, Felix the Cat. He started in 1919, so 100 years ago. We also have Sylvester from Looney Tunes. He's not really a black cat. He's more a tuxedo cat, but he is also an oldie. I don't know if he's 100 years old, but he is way, way up there. And then, of course, we have Blackie, who is the world's richest cat, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. This cat, in 1988, inherited $12.5 million. Wow. But don't think the owner was totally wacko. That wasn't his entire fortune. He also left a great deal of money to various cat organizations. So this pet parent was not only wanted to make sure his cat Blackie was taken care of in the best way possible, but he also gave generously to many shelters and other cat organizations. And let's see, we also have Snowball 2 from The Simpsons. I believe Snowball 1 was a white cat. So Snowball 1 was white, and then so they made Snowball 2 all black. And last but not least, we have Lucifer, the cat from Cinderella. So these are just a few of the black cats out there that have been well-known throughout history and thought about and made the list of famous black cats. Now we'll be right back and I will share with you some current lore about black cats and something you can treat your cats to on Halloween. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. I have discovered a great brand called Dr. Elsie's. They are truly focused on your cat. One of their mottos is, we've always put ourselves in our pet's paws. 
I just love that. And did you know the number one behavioral reason that cats are either abused, abandoned, or returned to shelters is doing their number ones and number twos outside the litter box? Yep. And let me tell you, I have been dealing with that for quite a while with one of my kitties, Charlotte. I have a multi-cat household like so many of you, and no matter what I tried, she refuses to use the litter box, and I have tried everything. Nothing worked. And then I found out about Dr. Elsie's Cat Attract. Now, most cats are not that picky, but almost every household has a Charlotte, and that cat will be persnickety about using the litter box with other cats. Well, Dr. Elsie's Cat Attract is a product that helps bring cats like my persnickety Charlotte back to using the box. And Dr. Elsie is so positive that you will love their product. They're going to offer a rebate and pay up to $20 for your first bag of any Dr. Elsie's litter. You can visit DrElsie's.com slash catitude and print out the rebate form or fill it out online. I will also have it on my Instagram, which is at catitude17. Give Dr. Elsie's Cat Attract Litter a shot. You will not regret it. Happy cat, Mom. Happy cat. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about black cats and Halloween, of course. And, you know, there's a lot of thought when it comes to black cats on Halloween. And it used to be very, very common for shelters to not adopt out black cats around the holidays. And in fact, some still go by this rule. And there was also very common it was very common for pet world out there to inform pet parents of cats, keep your cats indoors around Halloween, don't let them out and so forth. I thought that was kind of debunked, but not really. I still read a lot about it. And the reason being is it was thought that around Halloween, people would that found black cats would do evil things to them, you know, and, you know, evil things to the cats, uh, satanic rituals and, and strange things. And that's actually extremely rare to non-existent these days. But do you want to even consider that it might happen? I don't have a black cat that's outdoors. And um, my outdoor cats are actually more feral community cats. But I do have a tuxedo and she's always indoors. So... If I was the pet parent of a black cat, even though it's rare, I don't think people have satanic rituals these days and do evil things to black cats, I wouldn't want to chance it. I'd keep my cat indoors. Just better safe than sorry, right? You never know what could happen. So that's my take on keeping your black cat indoors if it's an indoor-outdoor cat. And some people do this for, you know, a week before Halloween, two weeks before Halloween, a week after Halloween, just to be safe. Now, here's what a lot of shelters do. They don't like to adopt out black cats around Halloween. And the reason is not so much about any type of satanic ritual, but because you'll get the type of, you'll get like a, as I call it, a faux pet parent. And what I'm meaning is, Someone who's, oh, I want a black cat for Halloween. That'd be so great. It'll look great at my party. It goes with, you know, a live cat for my decorations versus, you know, a, a static, you know, fake cat. And they want to avoid this type of pet parent. It's almost like when you give somebody a gift of um, a pet during the holidays and that's considered a big no unless there's been thorough discussion. Shelters don't want to adopt out a cat only to have the cat brought back or even worse, abandoned. So some are just a little cautious when it comes to adopting out black cats during Halloween. But on the other hand, there are also a lot of shelters that use Halloween as a way to promote adoption. 
not only for black cats, but also for your orange or like or ginger cats. And they um, use it as a way to say just just to promote the cats, promote adoption. And of course, when they're adopting out the cats, they do if as long as it's a good shelter and, and most of them are great, they do a very thorough investigative type of placement so that if you're considering adopting a cat around Halloween and you happen to select a shelter that is a little bit more apprehensive to adopt out a cat during this time, just know that it might be because of Halloween and we assure them that you're going to be a loving pet parent, not one of these fly by night, I'm bringing the cat back because I don't need a black cat anymore. It's not Halloween type of person. I'm sure most of you that are listening are their type of pet parent that wants to adopt a cat and not, you know, just have a cat for decorating your home. Okay, now here is something really, really fun. I'm going to share for your cat. You know how it's trick or treat? Well, here's a little bit about the treat part of it. I had this on a recent show. So if you'd like to go back and listen to that show, um, I think it mentions some treats for cats and it's pretty close in number to this show. But I'm going to also share with you some treats for your cats. Did you know that cats love marshmallows? Yep, they do. I had no idea. I mean, of course, my cat, Dennis, whenever I'm sitting at the, you know, on the couch and eating whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. And one of these days, I'm going to share a video with you guys on my Instagram, which is slowly growing, at Catitude17. Anyway, there's some pictures of Dennis, but I have to do a video of this. No matter what I'm eating, it doesn't matter. You turn around, and there's Dennis, and he wants some. And most of it is not really good for him, so he doesn't get any. But marshmallows are. So what I did was I took the little little marshmallows, the mini marshmallows, and I put it on a little toothpick. Just a tiny one, you know, a little bit at the top, not where he would hurt himself. And I let him, you know, lick it and chew it. And wow, I had no idea. He loved it. Also, cats can have marshmallow fluff. So who knew, right? I wouldn't have thought that of all the things I could have, marshmallows would be one. It just, I wouldn't have ever came to mind. But use this as a rare treat. It's not good to give them a whole lot of marshmallows, one or two maybe, that's it. And then here's another treat that came from that show. But you should take a listen. That show is really good. But here's another treat. You can take baby food like maybe like a chicken or or beef baby food and maybe take the little ice cubes trays that they have and make little catsicles <laughs> popsicles for your cats and neither depending on the size you could put little toothpicks in there or on the mini ones or if you're making a big one which i think about half of it or more than half would end up going into the sink or into the trash i would suggest that you make sure you look at the ingredients because there are a lot of foods that are toxic to cats, you know, such as garlic and onion and grapes and raisins are too. Of course, that wouldn't be in the baby food for beef or chicken type of base, but you have to read the ingredients because certain ingredients are toxic to cats and you don't want to do that. But there you have it. Some great treats for your cats for Halloween. So, In conclusion, Halloween is all about, you know, dressing up, having a good time. For those of us with black cats, just be a little cautious around Halloween. I don't think it's anything in these times to really have concerns about, but go with your gut. You know, if I had a black cat, I would probably keep it indoors just because I wouldn't want to put my cat in danger or have any type of concern at all when it came to my cat. And make sure that if you have a friend that's considering adopting a cat around Halloween, or if you're considering adopting a cat around Halloween, that you understand uh, the viewpoint of the shelter and be empathetic if they're a little strict with you around Halloween. Some do see a lot of cats, you know, taken and returned or abandoned around this time. So just be aware of that. 
And I'd like to thank my cat crew. None are black. One is Tuxedo. And that is Dennis, Molly, and Charlotte, and Sammy, and Jethro, and Jazz. And for teaching me about the little crazy ways of cats and, um, and how they like marshmallows. Thanks to Mark Winter for making me sound better than I do. And thanks to all of you, all my feline friends that listen to Catitude. Keep listening. We have some great shows coming up. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.